This playthrough is rated M for Mature. What's better than watching House of Dragons? How about playing a game with dragons in them? Greetings and salutations, viewers. While I'm here with another new game from my library, and this time it's Shadowrun Dragonfall, the director's cut. This is a, well, I wouldn't say a direct sequel, but it is a kind of a, a, a spin-off sequel to Shadowrun's Returns. I mean, it's in the same world, and I think the events, same events kind of happen, but it's in a different place, different time. A different location and it has a definite theme to it uh, most people consider this one the best out of the three games and I like Hong Kong maybe a little bit more but then again I played that recently not too many years ago maybe if I get back to this maybe I'll consider it the better one and it's probably true but uh, either way uh, sh uh, this is the director's cut version of the game basically what it just means is they just tweaked up some things added some extra dialogue missions and stuff like that to fill out the game a little bit more than what originally was at at launch so don't uh, and I don't even think you can buy the... Maybe you can buy the original game in some places, but most places now have the director's cut instead. I used to have the original game, like, on a file I was sent when I uh, kickstarted this game a long time ago. It sent me the game and all the expansions, but I don't even know if I still have the file around on my computer. Maybe I do, but it doesn't really matter. We're playing the director's cut anyway, so let's start our new adventure. For those of you who play uh, watch the Shadowruns Returns, this is going to be very similar in a lot of things. For those who are just joining us, I'll briefly go over what's going on but uh, to uh, to the game, but I'll try to make it a bit more streamlined for those who've already seen it. Um, you can play, you can use this model to find more stories online and download them into your uh, um, workshop. Like if you're using GOG or Steam, Steam's a little bit easier with the Steam Workshop type of situation, but um, but you can do that as well. Um, so anyway, let's launch the com campaign. So we can do either normal, hard, or very hard. Basically, the difference in difficulty is how much HP um, damage, stuff like that, occurs at harder difficulties. AI is usually a little bit more smarter. Uh, I'm just going to play normal, just kind of give people who are playing this the regular experience. I could play the game on hard, maybe very hard, but I'd rather just kind of have a, a fun time while, while having to worry about it too much. So. All right, we got to create our character now. Choose male or female. It doesn't matter what your sex is in this game. All that matters, well, all that will happen is maybe they might mention it to you, like female, male, that type of thing over the course of the game. Now you can choose five different races to play as, and each have their own benefits. Human, uh, they're the most common race in the game, uh, uh, like any other world. Their benefit is they get three extra karma at the start of the game. Karma is used to level up your stats and abilities. They have nines and everything, so they're good all around, and that's what their maximum, or nine all around by that, I mean, that is their maximum by the end of the game. Um, we can choose elves. Elves are the typical elves in fantasy. Long, you know, long, beautiful, all this other stuff. Uh, you know, everyone's jelly of them. They're the, the race that got off the easiest during the awakening in 2012. Uh, a brief uh, uh, summary: Shadowrun is basically what happens in uh, what happens if in 2012 some weird magical event occurs that causes all humans to suddenly turn into random uh, fictional uh, creatures from mythology, you know, elves, dwarves, orcs, trolls, stuff like that, and random monsters and magic occur, dragons, all this other stuff, and that's how, and, and it's obviously takes place in the future, so there's guns, cyberware, and all this other stuff, so think cyberpunk, but in a different matter. I'm trying to remember what actually came first, if it was cyberpunk or if it was Shadowrun, maybe around the same time, you know, a lot of gaming companies kind of would copy off of each other and try to do their own thing, because there's a lot of things that are similar to this game as into cyberpunk. Well, anyway, elves, the big thing about elves is that they get a plus one to their charisma, and their max stats are different. Quickness can go up to 11, charisma to 12. Then we got the dwarf. They are dwarves, even though I was doing a pirate accent. Dwarves are the typical short race. Uh, their big thing is that they're stronger. Uh, well, not the strongest, but they have a decent strength stat, and they get plus one to their willpower. So their maximum body can be 11, strength 12, and willpower 11. Uh, orcs. Orcs are, well, obviously different from your Tolkien orcs or most fancy orcs, uh, but they breed like rabbits, apparently, so they're close to humans in terms of how many there are. Uh, they get plus one to body. Uh, their body stat can go up to 14, strength to 12. Their charisma, intelligence, and willpower, or charisma and intelligence don't go up to nine. They only go up to eight, um, which is the... So if you're trying to play a class that is based off that... Um, that's what you have to worry about if you're trying to mid max anyway if you're you can play any class with any race and it'll most of them are pretty viable maybe on the harder difficulties you might consider mid maxing just to 
make sure it's a lot more efficient. But on normal and easy, you can kind of play around a bit more on that. Uh, and then trolls, finally trolls are, you know, they're not the under the bridge trolls or trolls on the internet. They're like, you know, actual fantasy trolls, you know, the seven foot tall hulking mass type of guys. Um, their big thing is they get a plus one body to, uh, plus one to their body and strength stat. Their body can go up to 17, quickness to eight, 15 strength, six charisma, six intelligence, and nine willpower. So yeah, you might not want to be making a troll a decker, for example, or the face man of the group, but if you want to, you can. It's just he's not going to be as effective as maybe the other races. So that's all the races you can choose from. Then we got the classes. Street Samurais are basically not really so much melee. They can be melee or ranged, but they're really basically all about combat and how to make that efficiently with weapons and stuff like that. Uh, mages, typical mage, they throw spells. They can do buffs, debuffs, and uh, an attack with like spells like lightning and stuff like that. Their big thing is willpower and spell casting. Uh, oh yeah, and if you're doing Street Samurai, you want to do body, strength, or quickness as your key attributes, and then skills are closer range depending on how you want to build them. Uh, throwing weapons and dodge, that's their suggestions anyway. Deckers are basically the people who hack the internet and they can open doors, you know, um, uh, you know, turn off programs, activate things, whatever, it's a bunch of things. Um, their big thing is intelligence, so that will mostly be what you're putting most of your stat into. Uh, key skill decking, uh, specialization, expert systems. Uh, shamans. Uh, shamans are a little bit different than mages. What they can do is they can still do attack spells and buff spells, but their big thing is about summoning creatures through either totems or through the environment to help you fight um, everything. So uh, so slight, not quite mages in a way. I mean, you could call them a summoning mage, I guess, if you want to go to it. Their big thing is charisma, so elves would be a pretty solid choice for a shaman um key sp uh, skill spirit summoning to increase odds of uh, the totem benefit and conjuring and then we got riggers riggers their big thing is instead of going i mean you can still go through the matrix zone because they do get a data jack but their big thing is controlling uh drones to help you in combat so basically it's extra allies for all intents and purposes um yeah you do have to have extra stuff on you to heal them and stuff like that but they can more than make up for it. Yeah, uh, overall in the game, probably the Street Samurai can do the most damage in the game, but dr Riggers can get pretty close uh, because of all the extra allies. Um, Shaman's uh, spirits are a bit weird. They can get decent damage, but because of the way they work, um, it's hard to keep the damage active. And you do have to pay money every time you want to uh, uh, summon totems. Although I guess you have to do with drones, but you don't have to do it uh, as often, it seems like. Uh, shaman, because shaman, there's a chance of your summons going rogue, so that's like why it's not as um, solid as maybe like a rigger, for example. Anyway, riggers, their big thing is intelligence, uh, key skill, drone control, and drone combat. And physical adepts are basically your monks of the game. They use magic to beef up their abilities. When I played Shadowruns Returns, I played a troll physical adept just for fun. Um, and their big thing is body, strength, and willpower, and chi casting as your skill. Basically, with adepts, you're usually going up in combat and physically attacking them. That's their big thing. Um, I mean, you can use them with a gun. It's just a lot of their bonuses are to melee or or weapon in their hand, that type of thing. And then the question mark is, is basically you just build your character from scratch. So we're going to do that really quick. So we're going with... Oh, sorry. I wasn't actually going to go to orc. I thought about making an orc character, but I want to play a very specific class for this game. So we're going to go human. And we're going to go, let's see, what do I want to look like? Yeah, a lot of these models are similar from the previous game. So, let's see. I'm just looking for something that kind of sticks out. Yeah, a lot of them are like the same guy with uh, different outfits. Maybe hmm. we could go with Crazy Dude. I mean, that wouldn't be bad. Uh, actually, I've got... Uh, let me see, I'm trying to look for a good model. Maybe we could go with go with the dreadlocks guy, I guess. I don't know. I was trying to go with something. Well, we could just do a different portrait and make him look different either way. Uh, uh, yeah, let's go with that. Why not? All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got the hair ready to go. All right. Oh, I guess it does kind of design your model. Oh, wait, no. Oh, yeah, it does kind of de design your model based on that. That's kind of neat. All right. Yeah, we'll go with that. I, I like that, so. All right. Uh, yeah, karma represents how your level goes up, so. Okay, so. 
All right, so basically body, what that is for those who haven't played the game, body increases your physical uh, resistance to physical damage and HP points. Every time you put a point into it, it increases by 10. I'm going to be playing, uh, unlike the previous game where I played a guy who was always into combat by punching everything, we're going to play the complete opposite. So we're going to play a person that's not going to be in the combat too much, going to be in the back uh, for the most part. So, um, okay, and quickness, what this stat is, is it allows you to hit and range combat and reduces the chance to be hit physical attack. So if you're playing physical attack, this would be really good. I'm not going to do too much into quickness because I'm not going to be, I'm going to be basically keeping my guy in the back, which is going to be boring for people who like those types of main characters. But, uh, so what I want to do is leave my quickness at one for now and we're going to put our dodge at one just so, just in case, just kind of keep it, uh, just in case I get physically hit, stuff like that. It shouldn't happen, but you never know. Uh, strength, we're going to leave ourselves at strength. Oh, I guess I could go over the other stats. Basically, quickness affects how your ranged combat works. So if I was using a gun, I'd be pumping it into physical combat. And then the way this works is that stat ways works is um, you have the main stat, which is quickness, and I have to level that up to a certain point. Now, the, what this line indicates is how far you can beef up a, a stat to. So everything, the max level of a skill can only be buffed up to as high as your stat. So if quickness is at one, nothing else within the quickness range can go above one. So range combat, I can't get higher than a one if I don't put something more into quickness, for example. Uh, range combat is just the general calculation to hit with ranged weapons, and it locks st specific skills as you get higher. Pistols, uh, you beef this up if you want to lock, work with pistols. They have their own set of damage and attack. SMGs, they're multi-shooting weapons. You can either shoot single shots or multi-shots depending on the gun you have. Shotguns. They're really good at close range for, and they have a high crit chance at, high, at, at close proximity. Rifle, they're probably the most damage dealing weapon in the game is rifles. So if you want to go with a guy who shoots from far away and does like a lot of damage, you probably want to focus on rifles. Um, they're probably the most effective type of weapon in the game. But that's up to you. Like I said, it depends on your difficulty you're playing as. Um, and the dodge, what this is, is your ability to dance, dodge physical attacks. So if you get in the close combat or if you're close to a guy who will be in combat under the physical adept or something. Now strength, what that is, that increases your chance to hit with melee weapons or throwing weapons. Throwing weapons are like knives and stuff like that. Um, strength can also affect how far you can throw grenades and stuff like that. And then chance to hit with melee swords and stuff like that. Close combat is your ability to hit with close combat weapons. Melee weapons is if you use melee. Unarmed if you want to go a fisticuffs fighter, which is what I did in the previous game. I did a fist uh, physical adept. Um, and then throwing weapons, like I said before, stats for that. And then intelligence, uh, this is used for decking, increases your chance to hit with programs and drones. So this is why if you're gonna do like a drone or rigger, you wanna have high intelligence. So I wanna have a pretty high intelligence like right from the get go with this guy. So we're gonna go to five intelligence. And then eventually I wanna beef up my biotech. Actually, let's go ahead and just get it to three for now. Biotech, what that is, is it allows you to um, gains bonus to hit points when you hit with a medikit. That's how you heal yourself in combat outside of spells and other such things. So, um, But anyway, having one in biotech gives you so much HP. Two allows you to see enemy HP. And then three is just how strong it is. Uh, you can go higher than that, but for now we're just going to go to three. Then we are going to be doing decking for this guy, so I want to get... Decking uh, is basically a chance... It's like with intelligence, chance to hit with programs and stuff like that. So if we click point one, we can get equip the Sony CTY 360. That's a type of deck. If we put a point uh, number two in it, we can increase our chance to hit enemies by 10%, which is the marked target. What that does is when you use that ability on someone, it increases your chance to hit with them. So if you're trying to shoot them and whatnot, or if you're trying to hit them with your drones. Um, at third point, uh, let's see. Third, we can equip the Renraku Kraftwerk, number one. That's another type of deck. And then finally, when we get to uh, four, we can our mark target two can raise it to 15% to hit enemies. So we're going to stick with that for now. ESP control, uh, that's the power of a Decker's expert system. Uh, ESP programs in the matrix. They're uh, programs you can activate that'll help you. Um, when you go de uh, into the matrix, it's usually you by yourself, but you can also get other programs to help you out so you're not just being attacked by ice programs and stuff like that. So. Got to beef that up to two for now. And then I also want to do droning with Deckers. Most Deckers usually go solidly into one or the both. You don't have to. But you can make like a Decker that is really good with pistols and just does the Matrix stuff. But I want to do a Decker 
or I want to do a rigor decker this this playthrough so okay so drone control what that is is allows you to uh, equip more powerful drones over the course of the game more powerful drones will do better damage and stuff like that so level one we can class C class drones and then two just is just a dip into that level uh, then drone control three allows us to class class B drones and then finally four allows us to equip two drones at the beginning so even double your mint double your gun double your fashion and then drone combat um, adds abilities and bonuses to my drones when I use them. So level one adds plus one armor, two adds five to their accuracy, three adds one to their dodge if someone tried to punch them, and the drone damage plus two HP damage for the drone. So we're going to stick with that. And then finally, and let's see, willpower. What that is, it calculates your ability to hit with magical damage. So spell ca so willpower is usually tied into mages and stuff like that. So if you're making a mage, decent willpower. Spell casting, this uh, allows your ability to hit with spells. Chi casting, this is what you're going to use for an adept. Uh, this allows you to get more abilities with your uh, uh, physical adept if you're doing that. And finally, charisma. Charisma, what this is used is it's used to uh, control spirits, but also when you beef your um, uh, charisma, you can also get what's called etiquettes. What etiquettes are are little extra uh, topics of conversation can pop up. Uh, and it's basically things you know about the world so let's put one into it just to show it off so etiquette what it is is yeah you be, you can behave specifically in certain social situations and can sometimes give you a benefit to a certain situation sometimes it'll allow you to avoid combat sometimes it'll allow you to just give extra information on the world um, sometimes you get extra rewards for it um, so uh, really it just depends it's kind of preference there are some that will get used more efficiently than others like an academic gets to use the most throughout the whole game but most times all it is is giving you extra info on the world and having yourself be a smarty fans for example um uh street is just streetwise stuff um i'm trying to remember early game gangs probably suggested but overall the over the course of the game gang or shadow runner probably ends up giving you the most in terms of rewards and stuff like that so i'd say either do shadow runner or gang after that, it's kind of up to you. I'll try to point out over, courses, over the course of the game like what etiquettes would be useful at certain parts. But I'm going to stick with gang for now. And then you can do spirit summoning, which allows you to uh, summon spirits and use them. Spirit control helps you control the spirit, and you can put uh, certain points into controlling the spirit to keep them under control. And then conjuring improves your uh, chance to hit with conjuring spells, which is things outside of summoning monsters and stuff like that. So... All right, so I don't know, we got a couple more points left. I might just save it for now. Um, yeah, we, we don't have to spend all our car, but we can spend it at a later date, so. Yes, because we can spend it. We don't lose it, so. Anyway, let's name our character. So I want to call myself Black Wire. The Harfield Manor Run. Life was good. Easy jobs, regular pay, and a reliable crew. But things went south and you had to drop off the grid. Put a bullet in the past and start fresh somewhere new. The promise of opportunity and anonymity draws you into the frigid city of Berlin, the Flux State. A grand experiment in social order. Corporations tread carefully here. Even the great dragon Lilfri only has so much sway in the constantly evolving power structure of Berlin. The perfect place for a savvy shadow runner to disappear and begin anew. And as luck would have it, home to your old business uh, partner in crime, Monica Schaefer. It's your third run with Monica and her team. An old castle hold fast, one hour east of Berlin, perched on a hill overlooking the countryside. The job is standing smash and grab. Crack the vault, grab the data, get out in one piece. A mediocre payday, but work is work. As the team gathers for Monica's pre-run briefing, you pause to take in your surroundings. Little Free is mentioned in uh, Shadowruns Returns, by the way, by one of uh, the associates. Harfield Manor, 2044, uh, 2054, one hour east of Berlin. Um, yeah, he was mentioned by an associate that helps you fight those uh, mutant uh, spectral bugs, <laughs> that uh, alien spectral bugs, uh, which was an instant campaign. It, it goes too fast for being something that sounds as dangerous and epic as that is, you know what I mean? The estate grounds are silent, save for the faint whistling of the wind. Your team gathers near a side entrance to the old castle hold vest, cloaked in darkness. The night is peaceful. You know it won't last. You know it for what it is, a pleasant illusion that will shatter at the sound of the first gunshot. Listen up, folks. 
Monica Schaefer, you ran with her back in the day. Now she's your team leader. Your decking skills may be sharp, but hers are not Nova hot. Running with Monica is like taking a master class in icy breaking. I think that dialogue's different if you aren't a decker at all. We're on a time, uh, tight timetable. I want to enter the estate and find the basement and open the data vault, extract the files and bolt. Ten minutes, top to bottom. Trying to get home in time for Vum Talk, love? Dietrich, shaman, the old man of the team. He smiles at her, his facial tattoos writhing in the moonlight. Monica eyes twinkle with mischief. Maybe. How many times have I told you, you can't trust anything that comes out of a dragon's mouth. That trid trash will rot your bane. She grins. It's educational. Besides, there should be a milk run. Soci security is supposed to be light. A few automatic weapons or no armor. With a little luck, we'll never know we were here. Uh, works for me. Let's get paid. I'll watch your back all the same. In my experience, there's no such thing as a milk run. Just like old times, eh? Monica's smile returns, more wistful this time. The moonlight catches her face at a strange angle. Yeah, just like old times. Milk run or not, we should be careful. Glory, razor clawed street samurai. Her eye, voice is cold and neutral, her expression placid. There may be only be private security, but their bullets don't know that. I can patch you up if I have to, but I'd rather not have to. You people need to relax. We're professionals, remember? Monica raises her arm and speaks into her wrist mounted calmly. A darkened face shimmers on the view screen. Hi, girl. What are you position? The calmly crackles and the response comes back, low and soft, softer than you expect from a troll. Affirmative. The alarm lines have been cut. I have clear line of fire on the estate's service entrance. When you exit the building, the path will be clear. Excellent. Thank you, Iger. Just doing my job. I go out. The calm wing goes dark. Monica winks at you as, the dro uh, as she drops her arms. See, we're professionals. All right, people. Enough chatter. Our client wants the data from the vault, so we get him in the data from the vault. Quick, quiet, and quick. You said quit twice. She grins. Fem talk is on tonight. Gloria raises an eyebrow slightly. I told you, it's educational. All right, well, before we grab, uh, go, let's grab our stuff. All right, what do we got here? All right, let's grab a weapon. Like I said, uh, matters depending on... I mean, obviously, if you're trying to be efficient, maybe grab, like, the rifle. But if you're not playing that type of class, uh, doesn't matter for me. Since I'm staying in the back, I'm just going to grab a pistol. Yeah, probably rifle would be better, but I'm crap to shoot no matter what I use. So, because of the build I'm using. So. All right, let's get the rest of... Uh, we get... The rest of our kit, we get a basic mini kit, a frag grenade, we got the Fischetti Security 500. Let's see, 12, uh, 1,250 New Yen. We get a Doberman Rig Simple Drone Repair Kit. And uh, that's it. So it doesn't give us our, well, I'll go over that here in a second. So let's leave the van. All right. Let's look at our equipment here. So we got a couple car we can spend. I'm not going to spend that right now. Save it. There's our description for the area and what we're supposed to do. Enter the building no items uh, that are important to be aware of and there's our stuff right there so right now we are the game considers me a despite me buying everything it considers me a drone rigger for this so i don't have a deck i'll have to buy that later so but right now we have the doberman rig and we also have uh the fischetti security 500 gun does decent damage at six range range minimum cap 12 so but yeah the doberman this is a c-class drone a basic combat drone that may that every rigger should own at least once in their sh shadow career. We've also got the secure clothing, basic clothing for shadow runners, so nothing too specific. Yeah, there's our drone repair, because for our rig, or, or for our drone, we're going to have to heal it if it takes too much damage. The only way to do it is to do drone repair kit. Also got a uh, Boo Mona trauma kit that basically is a resurrection ability. Uh, Phoenix down, all that. There's a grenade and a basic med kit. Cyberware, what that is, is it allows you to give you special abilities, improve your stats, whatever, over the course of the game. Um, if you're playing a street samurai, you most likely end up filling this whole thing. I might fill it up a little bit with my character, depends. Um, maybe to improve my drone rigging, but anyway, the only thing we got right now is a data jack. A requirement for riggers and deckers and those that want to use a smart link weapon, so. Okay, so let's follow the team. And yeah, look at this castle. Up oh, there's our drone right there, following us. Hey, little buddy. And there's uh, some uh, sun, sun absorptures. Whatever you want to call it. Either that or maybe it's for something else. I don't know. Solar panels. That's it. I was trying to think for a second. <laughs> yeah, it was wrong me to do. Anyway, it's in the menu. All right. 
Oh, and if you ever like go weird on the camera and you want to move it to where your location is, just press this little icon there and it'll switch you back to your character there. So, all right, let's uh, head on in. Hello, anyone here? A private museum. The owner of the state must have money to burn. And if you want to like highlight stuff, if you press the Alt key on your keyboard, if you're playing that, I'm not sure what it is on a controller if you're playing like on a PlayStation or something like that, but for the computer, it's Alt. So you can hold that. You can also highlight it, but anyway, let's expect this. A variety of remarkable, well-placed, preserved Slavic artifacts. Okay. The complete skeleton of a theropod dinosaur appears to be genuine. Maybe. Let's check over here. The vase in the case looks both very old and very valuable. A, spine, a fine scroll work of lapis and gold leaf decorates its exterior, and the interior shimmers with the organic beauty of Avalon shell. Your fixer could probably move this thing in a heartbeat. You can't help but notice that the glass encasing looks a little awfully flimsy. You can either walk away or smash the glass. Okay, vase, you're coming with me. It's just right. It's just my size. As you draw your arm back to smash the glass, Dietrich catches it. His gnarled hand, his gnarled hand tightens around your wrist. Not a smart move, Kleiner. We have a job to do. Hauling a great big vase isn't a part of it. Dietrich offers you a toothy grin. Unless the vase figured into your plans to complete the mission somehow. Did you have a vase-oriented strategy that does unavailable? Uh, I do get your point. The payday from the run we'll have to do. Uh, that vase is going to earn me a nice bonus. It can stay where it is for now, but I'm coming back for it. Or I was thinking we could use it to smuggle Monica into the data vault. Diedrich stifles a chuckle. An excellent fan, Backfire. I support it fully. We should get moving, though. We mustn't keep the others waiting. Nah, can't get it for now. Oh, well. Let's keep going. Oh, we got, uh, let's inspect this. The cask in the display case is decorated with inlaid panels of ivory scrimshaw. Oh, and yeah, we can also look over our companion stats as well if we press this. So if we go to the human bar, then we can switch over. Uh, Monica is a human female. Uh, she is built to be a decker, as you can tell. Uh, she's got seven intelligence, so way better than we are. Eventually, we'll get as good, or at least maybe better drone control than decking. But um, So, yeah, not too bad stats. Uh, we've got Glory here. She's the street samurai of the group. Uh, her big thing is melee, although you can do some ranged combat with her. It depends on the situation, but you usually want to get her pretty close to combat, if not like right up in someone's face. She's probably the only one who can handle it. And then we've got Dietrich. He's the, uh, he's the human uh, summoner of the group, so he's all about summoning and conjuring creatures. He's a very useful character in the game. Actually, most of the main characters are pretty useful for the most part. But yeah, his big thing is charisma. And then yourself, so. All right, let's keep going. All right, got a couple ways to go. We can either east or north, I guess. South or east, whatever, yeah, you know. Anyway, we wanna go this way first. <gasps> it actually kinda of does matter which way you go first, just because if you don't wanna, you know, be surprised in your first encounter if you're playing this game <laughs> first, you know. Anyway, yeah, we run into a dude when we go to this path. Uh, Turn-based combat, it's easy. Just basically, for those who aren't aware of the game, um, <clears throat> you have action points for all of your characters on screen right there. I could choose either character to go first, but there's not really a turn order per se. It's basically you go and then the enemy goes. So that two there means action points, which means you can do action points to either shoot, attack, move, cast spells, whatever. So if I wanted to move, for example, if I wanted to move to this little spot here, um, it would cost one point and then I could use that for something else. Um, same with the other characters. My character, and then this little bar here is what weapon I can choose. So I can have fist or my gun. I can switch to my gun, and my gun has a one attack, and this is the options for the weapon we have. Right now we only have this one here, which means shot. So it means use that to shoot things. And then because I'm a Decker Droner, I've got this ability called Mark Target, which allows me to mark my target so I can hit the uh, target, for example. So, <clears throat> And then you can also, uh, switch to if you're playing rigger you can choose this option to switch to your um, rig which you have to use points to activate it so um, so I use one AP to activate it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate it and then well, there's really no good full cover I ah, will just hide you I don't need to be seen okay we're gonna use my rigger rig to go over there and shoot him in the face dude you shot Marv in the face so move in there and then highlight him here because you always, in combat, you always want to be having one of these shields thing, and the shields indicate how much a dodge uh, you have to an attack. And also where you're at, it depends on 
if it's easier to hit because you can't be flanked and flanking means someone gets you on your other side not so much exactly on this side but if people are attacking you on almost the opposite sides they can get past your defense and hit you a little bit easier um almost no shield means it's like i forgot what the actual percentage i think it's like 10 percent uh dodge if it's like half a shield it's like 25 percent or something like that if it's a full shield it's like 50 percent something like that i'll have to look it up again it's probably not as high as i'm making it out to be but anyway we want to blast it bam uh, not a bad not a bad amount of damage the monica she comes with a um uh smg i believe type of weapon so um now let's move in close with her and let's just shoot the guy see if we hit 57 all right got him uh i think that's it actually there's no other dudes here so let me let me uh hold back just in case there might be other dudes though sometimes when you activate combat you can um other people will appear so let's uh end her turn actually let's have dietrich uh let's have dietrich cast aim on you just in case uh, aim, uh, Dietrich has spells that can do things. I'll go over them here in a second. I just want to see if anyone else is coming. Okay. That looks like we got some enemies, so. Okay, so we'll have to get ourselves in a different position. So I just want to move myself here. I'm staying, basically my character is staying out of the fight. So yeah, let's move my drone over here. All right, we'll have to wait next turn. Did you do something? Monica, we'll put you, well, basically so you can do something eventually. Let's see. Yeah, she has marked target three. Can she see him from there? Probably not. It's probably too far away. Yeah. Oh, I don't have enough AP because it costs. That costs one. Maybe it's because it's out of range or something. Oh, it's probably because I have to move. She's out of range. Yeah, that's right. Can I hit them from there? Probably not. They're probably too far away. Yeah, they're too far away. All right, we'll just uh, stay in place. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I guess I just. Unfortunately, I don't have Overwatch ability, so I can't do anything with that, so. All right, Gloria. All right, I keep calling her Gloria. She's not Gloria, she's Glory. I'll eventually move up, but I wanna wait till they get a bit closer. Uh, I could try, eh, I'd rather be closer instead of using oh, aim shot, what did that give me? 55, that's not bad. All right, nice, got a crit. Monica, yeah, we'll stay there. Um, actually, Dietrich, I want to have you cast Haste on Glory. What Haste is, it allows you to give you another character extra AP, so instead of being two AP per turn, she'll have three AP for two rounds, and it'll go back to two. Uh, Dietrich can also heal your wounds uh, for a little bit. Uh, you can also cast Aim, which uh, increases your chance to hit by 12%. You can also cast Electro Core, which allows you to do electric damage. Uh, and then you can also cast Dragon Slayer Idol, which allows you to um, if people are within uh, a certain range of you, you can reduce their damage or one, which is pretty nice. But I want to do haste. Haste is a really useful ability. Like I said, it's about action economy in this game. So yeah, let's try hitting you again. Ah, oh well. This is why I uh, uh, cast aim on her just to see if I can get her hit. Yeah, most times people are going to have to get as close as they Really? Well, the shotgun was most likely going to miss because you had to be pretty close for that one. So. Uh, switch to the drone. Get a little bit closer. And let's see. Oh, you're out in the open, dude. Uh, yeah, let's attack you. Nice. Alright, yeah, I'm staying there. Monica. Move you up a bit closer. Let's see if we can have you hit. Nice. Alright, Gory. I mean, I could have get her up and close, but I'd rather not. Uh, ooh, that'll give her full uh, shield. So, and then we'll do multi-shot and see if we can uh her weapon she has uh, because of her pistol range is, is higher she has this multiple skills she can do she can either do like a single attack aim a shot which will increases your hit by 15 percent and pierces armor by two so certain enemies are going to have like armor um and then uh and then she's got burst fire allows you to use uh multiple shots um but it does take three turns to uh cool down same with her aim shot so Oh, nice. Didn't hit with all of them, but hey. Uh, okay, Dietrich. Uh, really, right now, I don't really have to have you do much. You're probably too far away for... Oh, no, he's still... Okay, you can buff her. I could, oh, I could have healed her, too. Yeah, let's heal her. Cure her wounded. What healing does is it heals, it heals your wounded condition, and your wounded condition can change if you've been hit multiple times. Usually, your wounded condition is your final form of... Um, 
uh, final damage you've taken, so. Ah, oh, what? I can't believe you hit my rig. Ugh. Oh, well. There we go. Oh, is that it? All right. If you go straight into this room, you have to fight, like, a by, like before going to any other room, you have to fight, like, a, like 10 guys at once or something crazy like that. It's insane. Uh, all right. Everyone back up. So, all right. Let's check this terminal here. Let's see. Security node. Security alert response plan. Quebec 6. Matrix operation locked. HR, HTR team responding. So what you can do is you can walk away from the terminal. If you don't have a Decker, if you're, well, in this specific situation, if you are not a Decker, Monica takes the place of the Decker. So you wouldn't, if I wasn't a Decker, there wouldn't be an option. Well, it would be an option, but it'd be blurred out. Like I wouldn't be able to choose it. So we could have Monica do it. So, but yeah, we could do it since we are got decking too. So let's show off Monica, our skills. Override matrix operation door lock. Matrix operation unlocked. All right. But yeah, it's it's easy. It's just it's just that. So I'm, obviously, there's extra dial if you have Monica do it. So maybe I should have chosen Monica just to give her some screen time. So all right, ooh, we got a jack in spot. Yeah, jacking in. Select a decker to jack in. We're gonna choose Monica to do it because she's actually got deck. She's actually got a cyber deck. Um, let me show off her thing again just to. Uh, Okay, so Monica has, her thing is that she's got the, uh, uh, oh, it was a rifle. Sorry, I thought it was an SMG for some reason. She's got the Slick Decker outfit, which gives her like two armor, keeping it fresh. Uh, she's got the rifle, which does a yeah, 10 damage, long range, 28 rounds, nice. But she's got the Rinraku Craft Look number one, which allows her to equip four programs, two, SPNs, two S ESPs, two evasion, uh, IP at 175, and AP of three. So. So she gets a bit more actions in decking. It's the same in Shadow Run or in the tabletop game too. Deckers usually get a lot of action, but that's because it's happening so fast in the Matrix. It makes sense that you'd have multiple turns inside of there. Um, but anyway, but yeah, I want to have Monica do the jacking because she's actually got a deck. So, all right. So the programs she's got are uh, erosion level two, erodes integrity point, I see damage by 75 and then 25 ip ip is the damage you're doing to ice protections and stuff like that she's a medic she can heal herself or her friendly esps for 60 hp she's got suppression which reduces the alarm stat uh, the alarm stat what that does if it hits a certain uh hit a certain if it hits max then uh, dangerous ice programs usually called black ice will appear and they will wreck your day so you want to make sure the alarm never hits max and then she also got Blaster, which it's a area of effect spell that hits multiple things for 75 damage. And then she's got ESP. That's her. She can basically summon the program to help her in combat. So it creates, creates an assassin expert system program to help her fight things. So, all right. So let's go and move around. All right. Looks like we got a couple of things here. So we got some white ice. All right. So let's lay down there and attack it. I'm just gonna, usually most of them will just run up like right next to us yeah and flank us but then I can use my um, my area of attack program here since they moved up right next to me and I still got a couple more turns uh, let's see I mean might as well use it erosion on that guy and then we'll attack you. I mean, usually, oh, I thought I was going to do enough damage to finish them off. Never mind then. Well, luckily, these basic ice programs are pretty, got a pretty bad to hit. So. <coughs> Alright, we got a new program here. Uh, this white ice program, it's a little bit more aggressive than the basic ones we fought before. Alright, let's go ahead and do that erosion program on it again. And then smack it. Yeah, this is the first ma matrix section, so you don't have to worry about being too uh, worried about like danger and stuff like that. So anyway, we get payday antiquities delivery schedule. We can now sell this at uh, when we get to a fixer. So you always want to have a decker in between missions, so you can actually get a decent amount of Nuyen from selling data programs like that. 
Sounds like the mission's going by so well so far. Yeah, we got attacked and taken some damage, but uh, everything's coming up roses. Will this be a smash and grab mission? Easy peasy, Gary Teasy? Or will a change of plans cause the loss of a team member? Find out next time in the next episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.